Hey everyone, welcome to the first video for 2024. Now I'm working on a bunch of new photography content for you guys, so be sure to subscribe and sign up for my free newsletter, which is linked below. All right, so here's the thing. I visited my in-laws in Southern Utah for the holidays, and while I was there, I took a few days to explore Arches and Canyonlands National Park, and I also went to Goblin Valley State Park. Now, I've been to those locations before, and I even co led some workshops there, but this was different because for the first time, I actually left all of my Sony gear at home and went with my iPhone only. Now, after using the iPhone as my only camera for those four days, I wanna share my experiences with you. Some of them are good and some of them can be improved, but my overall impression is that using a device like the iPhone 15 Pro Max as your primary camera can absolutely provide you with everything you need to get beautiful landscape photos, mostly. So here's the first thing. I realized that as photographers, we're kind of creatures of habit, right? We often resist change, especially when it comes to big things like film versus digital or DSLRs versus mirrorless or even Lightroom versus everything else. But more to the point, as creatures of habit, we've developed certain muscle memories that we've been ingrained into ourselves. So think about it. Picture yourself grabbing your camera. Your right hand instinctively reaches out and your fingers curl to grab onto your camera's grip. Your thumb and index fingers move and you know that you shift the dials and the wheels and of course, press the shutter button. You also know that you can press your eye against your viewfinder to immerse yourself into your compositions. That muscle memory is critical and it's also completely missing from mobile photography. When you take a photo with your phone, you normally grab it, you know, the only way you can at the edges. You're also usually holding it at arm's length, right? Like that's what we do. And of course, there's no viewfinder. So the entire display becomes your viewfinder. But let's focus on the grip because I think that's a critical component. I believe that if you can introduce some muscle memory into your mobile camera, you'll instinctively approach your photography differently. At least that's how I did. So here's what I did for that. Before I left for my trip, I bought some iPhone accessories from a company called Polar Pro to help mimic that muscle memory of using a regular camera. So I ordered their Light Chaser Pro case for my iPhone 15 Pro Max, a 67 millimeter filter adapter so that I can use my polarizer and ND and infrared filters. I also got the Light Chaser Pro grip and the Light Chaser Pro Bluetooth shutter. Now, I paid for all these items with my own money. I'm not sponsored by Polar Pro and they have absolutely no input in this video. But I will leave some affiliate links below for each of these products and I'll earn a small commission if you buy anything using those links. It's just an easy way to help support the channel and it won't affect your price at all. Setting everything up is pretty straightforward. The case slides onto the phone as you'd expect and the fit is precise, which is really good. It also has this aluminum defender plate which protects the camera assembly and that's a nice touch, but like a lens cap, remember that you have to take it off first before you start shooting. Next, you've got to attach the grip to the case and you'll want to attach the Bluetooth shutter to the grip first, and that's also pretty straightforward. The case itself has this rail system and it's kind of clever, and that's how you attach the grip to it. You just slide up the release switch and then press in to extend the grip, and then you can position the grip at varying points on the case. And for me, I prefer having it mounted at the end of the phone. It kind of feels most natural as a camera. And once you pair the Bluetooth shutter to your phone, you can trigger exposures using most camera apps the same way you would with a regular camera. The other accessory that I got was the 67 millimeter filter adapter. And that lets me use my 82 millimeter filters when I use a step-up ring. Now that adapter securely slides into place above the camera assembly. And that's important because you don't want your expensive filters falling off and shattering. Unfortunately, I didn't have to worry about that because I'm using magnetic filters by Maven Filters. I absolutely love these filters and I'm working on another video all about that, so stay tuned. So here's the thing. With the grip attached, my entire experience in using my iPhone as a camera changed and I can't explain it, but everything just felt more natural. I approached my compositions in a totally different way than if I was holding my phone by the edges like you normally do. It felt so natural that I actually, like there were several times where I, brought the phone to my eye because I was looking for a viewfinder, but it wasn't there, but it's true. And while I had a great experience overall, the one item that gave me problems was the Bluetooth shutter accessory because on several occasions I'd press it to take a photo and it would kick off a burst, which was super annoying. And it happened in several camera apps. So that distracted me from my shot. And then I'd also have to go back to delete the burst after the fact. And again, just annoying. Also. I don't know if it's a power issue, but several times I would go to press the shutter button 
and it would start blinking like it was trying to repair to the phone. I don't know if it's a battery saver issue, but I wish I can turn that off. Uh, I just wanna press the button and take a photo. But aside from those issues, I had an absolute blast using these accessories and I would 100% recommend them to any iPhone photographer. So Polar Pro does have a light chaser system for the iPhone 12 Pro through the 15 Pro, but they're a bit different. So make sure you check out the system for your camera and see which accessories are available. So I hope this video inspires you to push the limits of your mobile photography. I'll be sharing a lot more on this topic throughout 2024, including some iPhone specific composition and editing tricks. And of course, I've got my Lightroom Everywhere course and that'll teach you how to manage all of your photos, including the ones you take with your iPhone. I'll leave a link to that right below. And speaking of Lightroom Mobile, check out this video where I share 10 hacks that will help you make the most out of that app. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified of all future videos. Thanks so much.